Next, we got our new champions. So for the one cost, we got our redeemed legionnaire Aatrox. Uh, Aatrox starts his star strikes his target, <laughs> excuse me, dealing a percent of his attack damage and heals himself for percent of his maximum health. Next is the one cost Gragas, uh, who is a Dawnbringer uh, brawler. So he's going to be a frontliner. Gragas drinks from his cask, granting his damage, re him damage reduction for seconds and causing his next basic attack to deal bonus magic damage. Okay, pretty basic. Next is the one cost Kalista, who is a, an abomination legionnaire. Uh, Kalista hers is spear toward the farthest enemy, dealing a percent of her attack damage plus bonus physical damage to the first enemy it hits. If this kills the target, the spear continues and will deal the overkill damage to the next target it hits. So that's pretty insane. So this is like a needle a spear. But if the spear kills the target, it will go through the target and go uh, up to the next target. So there could be some pretty nice uh, possibilities with this. Next uh, is Kazix, who is a Dawnbringer assassin. Kazix slashes the nearest enemy, dealing magic damage. If the enemy has no adjacent allies, the damage is increased. So basically, so it's a basic Kazix. Uh, also, uh, he's going to be uh, very OP as a first, uh, as a one cost assassin, especially if you three star him. Next is Kled, who is a Hellion Cavalier, who is like a uh, a uh, a cool frontliner or a strong frontliner. So Kled enters combat on Scar, uh, granting him a shield for 80% of his maximum health. When the shield is broken, the, he dismounts, briefly becoming untargetable, and granting him attack speed and causing every fourth attack to deal 200% of his attack damage. Okay, this could be broken. Uh, next is Leona, who is a redeemed knight. Leona raises her shield, reducing all incoming damage for 4 seconds. So basically, the old, old Leona is back. <laughs> next is Lissandra, uh, who is a coven renewer. Lissandra, so a coven renewer, so basically coven, you have a triangle in the middle of the triangle. That unit will gain a bunch of stats from all the covens. Uh, and renewer, uh, she will keep uh, stacking mana. So as you can see, just from reading this uh, again and again, I, I am already trying, uh, I am already and memorizing all the new traits. Uh, so, Lissandra hurls a dagger forward, so we know this, uh, to the enemy with the highest attack damage, deal magic damage to the first uh, target hits. After hitting its initial target or at its final destination, the dagger explodes, dealing magic damage to the nearby targets. All enemies hit by this, uh, by this spell have their attack damage reduced by 40% for 4 seconds. Next is Poppy, who is a Hellion Knight. Poppy throws her buckler at the farthest enemy, dealing magic damage. The buckler then bounces back, granting Poppy a shield that blocks damage. I remember when Poppy became super broken uh, like two sets ago, when people would three star her, would give her a bunch of like tanky items and one crit AP item, and that freaking buckler would kill everybody and every every single unit uh, from, uh, from uh, like during all the early stages. So yeah, I think this is why they made her a one cost, and I really hope she's not that OP. Uh, next is Udyr, who is a Draconic Skirmisher. Udyr swaps between Turtle and Tiger, stands with each cast, gaining the following benefits. Turtle gains a shield for 4 seconds, Tiger strikes 3 times quickly, and his, basic, and his next basic attack for a percent of his attack damage. Okay? Next is Vayne, who is a Forgotten Ranger. Vayne's attacks apply Silver Bolt, uh, the third stack, okay, so it's a basic, basic Vayne, you get three stacks on the same target, and the third uh, stack does bonus true damage. Next is Vladimir, who is a Nightbringer Renewer. Vladimir deals magic damage to the target, to the uh, to the target, and heals himself. Okay. Next is Warwick, who is a Forgotten Brawler. Warwick leaps to the enemy with the lowest percent health, stunning them and dealing magic damage and healing himself for 100% of the damage over two seconds. If this ability kills the target, Warwick will instantly cast again. Next is Zix who is a Hellion Spellweaver. Uh, Zix throws an Arcane Bomb at his target, dealing magic damage. Okay, pretty basic. A little the old the Zix. Next is Bran. So these are gonna be the two costs champions. Next is Bran, who is an Abomination Spellweaver. Bran launches a ball of fire at the nearest non-seared enemy, searing them for magic damage over 12 seconds. Seared enemies have reduced magic resist. All right, next is the Forgotten Cavalier Hecarim. Hikarim uh, creates an aura around himself for 3 seconds, each enemy within uh, takes magic damage and Hikarim heals himself over the duration. Alright, so this is the old Hikarim. Next is Kennen, who is a Hellion Skirmisher, so uh, his ability is Flame Rush. Kennen engulfs himself in flame, dashing behind his target, then to the farthest enemy uh, he possesses through our zap dealing magic damage and stunning them. Alright, 
Next is the two cast uh, Nautilus, who is an ironclad knight. Uh, Nautilus erupts the ground beneath his target, knocking them up and stunning them and dealing magic damage. Uh, enemies adjacent to the target receive half this effect. Alright, next is Sejuani, who is a Nightbringer Cavalier. So uh, Sejuani signals a Bristle to charge. Bristle is the, the giant like pig. Uh, dealing magic damage and stunning the target uh, for 4 seconds. Then uh, she then gains Frost Armor, granting her armor and magic resist. Alright, next is the 2 cost set, so set is no longer a 5 cost, it's gonna be a Draconic Brawler. Set pulls back for a punch, shredding armor for 10 seconds and dealing a percent of his attack damage as physical damage to all enemies in the area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he no longer has the uh, like the gigantic jump. Uh, next is Soraka who is a Dawnbringer Renewer. Soraka calms the area around the enemy with the highest current percent mana, dealing magic damage to all enemies hit and increasing the cost of their next ability. Alright, so she's a uh, backline disturber. Next is the redeemed invoker Syndra. Syndra grabs the nearest enemy and flings them towards the farthest enemy, dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies upon impact and stunning the thrown target. Okay, so that's a very cool disruption mechanic. Next is Trundle, who is a Dragon Slayer Skirmisher. Trundle drains the strength of his current target, stealing a percent of their health, armor, magic resist, and attack damage for 6 seconds. Okay. Next is redeemed, the Redeemed Ranger, Varus. Varus fires a hail of arrows around his target, dealing a percent of his attack damage as physical damage Varus and allies within the area are blessed, causing them to deal bonus damage, bonus magic damage with their attacks for 5 seconds, for 6 seconds. Next is the Forgotten Spellweaver, Victor. So Victor blasts his target dealing magic damage to the nearest enemy and granting a shield to the ally nearest to the enemy for 3 seconds. Next we got the 3 cost champions. So first we have the Virgin Draconic Ranger Ash. <laughs> so she's a 3 uh, triple threat. Uh, Ash fires an arrow at the furthest enemy dealing magic damage to the first enemy hit and stunning them. So it's basic Ash. Uh, if the arrow travels at least 5 hexes, the stun duration is doubled. Enemies within one hex receive 50% of this effect. Okay, pretty cool. Next is Katarina. So Katarina is still here. She's a forgotten assassin. Katarina throws a dagger at the farthest enemy dealing magic damage. When the dagger lands near the target, Katarina teleports to it and immediately launches three additional daggers at the nearest enemy that each deal magic damage. Okay, okay, this could be bad. This could be really, really bad news. Next is Lee Sin. Okay, let's check out if Lee Sin has changed. Who is a Nightbringer Skirmisher? Lee Sin slams the ground, dealing magic damage to nearby enemies and slowing their attack speed by, by 50% for first second seconds. So no longer the Lee Sin that kicks all your favorite units or your strongest units out of the out of the board. It's basically a like bland, very very bland, very vanilla Lee Sin. Okay, I'm okay with that. Next is the Hellion Mystic Lulu. Lulu casts an enchantment on the unit nearest to her. If this enchants an ally, they gain bonus attack speed for 4 seconds. If this enchants an enemy, they are transformed into a docile feline, stunning them and causing them to take 20% increased damage. So this is the the, uh, the old Lulu that can like uh, transform a very OP enemy, such as like a super strong Kale or a super strong Darius, into a little, little... Um, what did it call it? A docile feline, <laughs> which can be killed very easily. Next is the three cost Lux, which is a redeemed mystic. Lux launches her wand towards her farthest enemy, which returns her to her shortly after reaching them. Lux and each ally touched by the wand are shielded for the seconds. Additionally, Lux empowers her next basic attack to the additional magic damage. So basically, a shield that travels all the way to the end of the board and comes back to you, shielding everyone in the way and giving her extra attack. Uh, Morgana who's a Knight Ringer Comfort Mystic. Morgana fires chains to nearby enemies dealing magic damage after 3 seconds. All chains, all chained enemies are dealt on uh, an additional magic damage and stun. So basically you wanna you wanna make her survive a, uh, a fight so maybe give her uh, a GA or a bunch of HP so that her ability is fully launched and people are stunned or units are stunned, not people. Next is the Dawnbringer Skirmisher Nidale. Nidale transforms into a cougar, leaping behind uh, the, her target. While in cougar form, Nidale's attack range is reduced to 1 hex. She gains 45% dodge chance, so that's new. <laughs> and whenever she dodges, her next attack deals bonus nice damage. Okay. Next is the Revenant Assassin Nocturne. So every third attack, Nocturne slashes all adjacent enemies for 1%, 125% 
uh, of his attack damage and heal himself for a percent of the damage dealt if only one target is hit nocturne increases attack speed for 3 seconds so basically um, the short version of this is gonna leave uh, behind the, the enemies he's gonna attack uh, one of the biggest champions gonna attack a lot and a lot a lot and not and then he's gonna die and because he's a revenant he's gonna revive and he's gonna attack again that's how it's gonna work and it's gonna be worth three starring because i think it's gonna be very op in terms of assassins uh, next we have the abomination brawler nunu willem bites his target dealing much damage if willem targets uh, has less health than he does before he dies it bites it deals an additional 50 percent damage and becomes true damage okay so at least he doesn't recover hp which is good next is the three cost uh, pantheon who is a dragon slayer skirmisher so pantheon braces his shields reducing all incoming damage for four seconds and dealing a percent of his attack damage in the area in front of him over the duration next we have the dawnbringer legionnaire riven riven empowers her blade stunning nearby enemies for 1.5 seconds while dealing magic damage for the next eight seconds she gains bonus attack damage that's basically the old uh riven which can be very strong if you uh put everything in on her Next is the um, Yasuo Nightbringer Legionnaire. So uh, Yasuo strikes his target, dealing magic damage. Then he then empowers his blade, gaining bonus, uh, stacking bonus true damage on hit for the rest of combat. All right, very cool. Next is the Draconic Spellweaver Zyra. Zyra sends a surge of vines towards the farthest enemy. Enemy hit by the vines are dealt magic damage and stunned. Pretty cool. Next we have the Four Cost Champions. So first Four Cost Champion is going to be Aphidius, who is a Nightbringer Ranger, so Aphelios launches a number of attacks simultaneously, one at his target and the rest out the enemies nearest to them, dealing a percent of his attack damage plus uh, bonus physical damage to each. Next is the Dragon Slayer Nightbringer Assassin Diana. Uh, Diana calls forth Moonlight, drawing in all nearby enemies dealing magic damage and stunning them. So we have a bunch of CC, this set, a lot of it. Uh, next is the Forgotten Legionnaire Four Cost Draven. Uh, Draven st uh, starts spinning an axe, empowering his next basic attack to deal a percent of his attack damage plus bonus physical damage. It will return to his location after striking the target, and it, if Draven catches it, it will refresh the buff. A Draven can spin up uh, to two, can spin up to two axes at the same time. All right. Next is the Four Cost Ivern. So Ivern is a Revenant Invoker Renewer. Ivern summons his sentinel friend Daisy to fight with him, gifting her 100% of his ability power. Daisy immediately casts Shockwave upon arrival. If Daisy is already summoned, Ivern increases her ability power and commands her to cast Shockwave again. Okay, so that's pretty uh, OP. Next is the Ironclad Skirmisher Jax. This is your frontline. Jax slams his target uh, for a percent of his attack damage and gains 33% slacking or stacking, not slacking. <laughs> Attack speed for the remainder of combat. Jack sleeps to the nearest uh, enemy if no target uh, if uh, no target is in his attack range. So okay, very nice. We have an empowered attack and we have a leap integrated into Jack's. Okay. Next is the forecast Dawnbringer Invoker Karma. So uh, Karma fires a burst of energy towards a random enemy location that detonates upon impact, dealing magic damage uh, to adjacent enemies and reducing Karma's maximum mana down to a maximum of 10. Karma empowers every third cast, causing it to launch three bursts of energy towards different targets instead of one. So basically, this is the new uh, Nico, I guess, but with a different, a, a, a slightly different mechanic. Next, we have the four cost for the Kaiser, who is a Dragon Slayer Legionnaire. Mordekaiser shields himself for 50%, 50% of his maximum uh, health for 5 seconds, empowering his mace to deal bonus magic damage and gain 1 hex of range for the same duration. Next we have Rel, who is a redeemed ironclad cavalier forecast. Rel leaps into the air, creating a tether between herself and her farthest ally. When she lands to the, uh, the tether is broken, granting all allies near and between them a shield for 4 seconds and stunning all enemies in the same area, so she's gonna be a must-have as in uh, as a front line so you have you have to have rel as the iron clad and the other iron clan uh, front line i forgot which one it was i think it was Jax. yeah it's Jax. so these two are a must have uh next is rise who is a forgotten abomination mystic rise imprisons the nearest enemy dealing magic damage and stunning them his next cast is an empowered to spread from this target applying the same damage and stun to all enemies even the stun is uh, is replicated 
in a large area around the target. Very cool. Next is Divergent Knight Tarek. All allies in a large area around Tarek are healed and King armor for 5 seconds. Right. Next is Velcros, who is a redeemed spell weaver. This is one of the strongest mages we have right now. Velcros channels a ray of energy towards the enemy nearest to the center of the battlefield over 3 seconds, dealing magic damage over the duration. And the beam widens as Velcros channels, and he will turn if there are no enemies in the area. So uh, yeah, we have back, we have Velcros back, and if you stack him, he's gonna do one beam and delete a bunch of people if he is strong enough. Next we have our five costs, which uh, there are many of. So the new five costs are gonna be Darius, Garen, Heimerdinger, Kale, Kindred, Timo, and finally Virgo and Volibear. So we'll start with uh, the God Kings. So the first God King and the Nightbringer, Darius. Darius transforms into a God Wolf, becoming unstoppable as he lunges towards a nearby enemy. God Wolves join him in his hunt, each targeting their own prey. Enemies bitten by a God Wolf are dealt a percent of Darius attack power as his physical damage and have their armor reduced by 6% for 6 seconds. After being uh, after biting his prey, Darius next uh, few attacks restore 10% of his maximum health. So uh, this, this, these are legendary words. <laughs> I cannot even describe it how OP this is. Let's see what Garen does. Garen is a Dawnbringer, God King. So Garen calls down a sword that strikes a large area around his target, dealing a percent of each target's maximum health in magic damage and reducing their magic resist by 60% for 6 seconds. Garen gains a shield equal to 50% of his maximum health for seconds. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these two are broken. I'm gonna. Um, I bet a lot of people are gonna be uh, going for like if you can, always go for a Dawnbringer comp, like nine Dawnbringers or nine Nightbringers. I think it's gonna be super worth it, and they're gonna be super strong on their own because like Dawnbringers uh, gain a shield uh, when they hit like 50% HP, and uh, Nightbringers uh, gain uh, gain uh, like a spell vamp, like they recover HP when they hit 50%. So these, uh, like these two st stats are going to be super broken, especially when you add the ninth unit, which is going to be Darius or Garen, which will make your uh, your comp insanely OP. Kind of like uh, Cultist, when you hit the ninth Cultist, you got Galio and uh, it's basically GG. Uh, next is Heimerdinger, the 5 cost Draconic Renewer Caretaker. Heimerdinger powers his baby dragon, causing its next attack to be overcharged, launching 3 fireballs, fireballs across the battlefield dealing magic damage while burning enemies for 3 of their maximum health as true damage over 6 seconds and reducing healing by 50% for the duration. If Heimerdinger does not have a turret, this spell will create one instead. Alright? Next is the 5 cost Kale, who is a redeemed Verdant Legionnaire. Kale ascends throughout the fight, gaining additional bonuses. First, attacks deal uh, a percent of Kale's attack, damage as bonus true damage. Second, attacks explode around the target, dealing her attack damage and bonus true damage to adjacent enemies. Third, every seventh attack grants scale damage immunity for one second. Fourth, hits cause source to rain down around the target, dealing magic damage. This is they took Kale, they took like the broken Kale from set 4.5, and they made her a god unit. Holy moly! So yeah, this is a uh, super OP addition as well. Man, if you hit any of these five costs, I can see like how how OP your comp becomes. Damn. All right, I can see all of this being nerfed really, really soon. In my opinion, it's too strong. Next is the Eternal Mystic Ranger Kindred. So if you if you guys did not know, uh, Kindred splits into two units and becomes Lamb and Wolf. So Lamb creates a zone around herself that prevents allies from uh, within from dying. So the basic Kindred alt. Then while Lamb's respite is active, Wolf is invulnerable. Wolf's ability, Wolf returns to Lamb, healing them both, and then launches himself at the lowest health enemy dealing magic damage. Next we have Timu, <laughs> the, uh, the troll uh, champion. He's gonna be a Hellion Cruel Invoker. Timu scatters Infernal Souls around a random enemy. When an enemy nears an Infernal Soul, or after 3 seconds, it explodes dealing magic damage to the near nearby enemies and reducing their attack speed. So yeah, it's gonna be shrooms, a lot of shrooms, a bunch of shrooms everywhere. And like I said before, Timu is bought with your HP. You have to pay 6 HP to buy Timu from the shop and not 5 gold. You can actually sell him for 5 gold, but you can only buy him for 6 HP. 
Next is Viego, Viego Forgotten Skirmisher Assassin. He's gonna attempt to corrupt the soul of his target for 5 seconds, stunning them and dealing them magic damage each second, increased by 100% uh, each second. Viego will be interrupted if he is stunned. If his victims die, they are resurrected at full health to fight for him. Oh, okay. Okay, that's insane, he's an assassin. But lose a percent of their maximum health per second. Viego's allies prefer to not target Viego's victims while they're being corrupted, and corrupted enemies benefit from your team's traits rather than their original owner's traits. Holy moly. Okay, this is strong. This is really strong. Let's see what Volibear does. Volibear is a revenant brawler, so he's gonna have a lot of HP, and when he dies, he will revive again. So, Volibear leaps towards his target and slams the ground in a large area around him, removing any shield and uh, dealing magic damage and knocking up and stunning enemies. Huh. So, all of these five costs are in silly OP, and then Volibear comes and it's pretty, pretty normal, pretty standard. 